as we move through this next section, we're going to see and come across a variety of new instances or situations that the particle might be in. And we're going to need to consider some new modeling assumptions. A full list of modeling assumptions can be found in a separate video in the playlist. But right now for this question, we just want to consider a bead, a smooth bead. So a bead is just an object. So you'd usually find it on a bracelet or a necklace a small decorative object that has a hole drilled through it so that we can thread a string or wire or something can be thread through it. The main consideration or the main assumption that we're going to make is the fact that it's smooth and the fact that it's a continuous piece of string going through it means the tension will be the same on both sides of the speed. So the tension in the string on both sides of the bead will be the same. Okay, so just to catch up on the question that I'm working on here, the only numerical force we've been given is the eight newtons, which is acting to the left and holding the bead in equilibrium. Apart from that, I've modeled the weight as mg, since the mass of the bead is unknown, and I've modeled the tension in the strings. So these three things weren't told to us in the question, but I've made the decision to make those modeling assumptions, if you like. So with these unknowns, we can go ahead and we can find the components for this diagonal force. So T cosine 30 and T sine 30. Now that I've got all of the forces and components accounted for, I'll go and do the regular thing of resolving both horizontally and vertically. Starting horizontally, this object's in equilibrium. So 8 equals t cosine 30, and I can quite quickly get an expression for t. So t should be 16 over root 3, or as a decimal, 9.24 newtons. Okay, let's go ahead and resolve vertically. There's going to be two unknowns this time around. There's the t, and we're also going to have an mg involved. So I'm solving for mg. So rearranging and substituting in the value that I found previously for t. Sine 30, we know the value of. It's a half. So this expression simplifies nicely. I get an expression for the weight, which cancels down to 13.9 newtons. So a weight of 13.9 newtons. So many familiar techniques were employed to solve this question, but right at the beginning, we had to make use of those modeling assumptions, knowing what was to be considered when we knew we were working with a bead, and just making sure that we had a good, strong diagram labeled well, so we can actually do our vertical and horizontal resolving. You've heard this from me a lot because it's absolutely imperative. The examiners have explicitly said, students who don't set out their working in a logical, methodical way. Students who don't have a diagram for them to reference and to work from inevitably lose a substantial amount of marks in the exam. We're not going to let this be the case for us. We're always going to take this approach. Okay, apart from the bead, we're also going to reconsider incline planes, but this time around, we're going to involve some pulleys. So some of the same concepts we saw from year 12 will hold true. Okay, so let's just start our modeling with the information we've been given in the question. So I know there's this horizontal pulse, and I know that I have a particle hanging from a smooth pulley. Because we're working on an incline plane, I straight away want to make sure that I've got all of the necessary forces involved. So we'll go ahead and add the weight, a reaction force, the weight of the hanging particle. And because we're working with a string going over a pulley, we have tension. So if you remember, tension is modeled away from the bodies or away from the particle. So let's continue by getting some components for the weight and some components for this horizontal force. put it in the angles and labeling the components in terms of P. 
we're now ready to actually start resolving and finding some of these unknowns. So the question, we were told that the mass of the hanging particle was one kilogram, meaning the weight is G. So actually, I'm going to start with the hanging particle, and since we're in equilibrium, the force up should equal the force down. So actually, quite quickly, I realised that the tension is also going to be G. So now I can focus on the inclined plane. For the inclined plane, we have a smooth surface. So I can actually just resolve parallel to the plane. And if I go ahead and do that, the force in the positive direction is going to be T and also P cosine 45. And that should equal the force in the negative direction which is the parallel component of the weight. Okay, I know that T is G, or 9.8, so I can go ahead and just substitute that in and rearrange to solve for P. So just some smart rearranging here. Before I put anything into the calculator, I'm going to make sure I have this expression, this fraction written out. And now I can just put all these bits into the calculator, and nicely it gives us a value 16. Now that I know that the value for P is 16, I can go ahead and find the reaction force. The reaction force is going to equal the perpendicular component of the weight and the perpendicular component of the horizontal force P. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and substitute for values that we know. And once again, this is the point where I type into the calculator and get an answer of 32. So the reaction force is 32. And so the final part of the question has asked us to state any assumptions we've made around the pulley being smooth. So the assumption that we've actually made, the modeling assumption we've made, is that the tension is going to be the same on both sides of the pulley. The tension in the string is the same in both directions. Some of these assumptions we're using intuitively, or we're using because we've learned how to use them, but quite often we're going to be asked to state them, to be explicit about exactly what is the assumption that we've made. So just get used to these assumptions and being able to reference them and explain once you've used them in your calculation or in your model.